Hi there. How's everybody doing today? So, you want to install the GIMP animation package. I know I do too. Um, maybe you want to make animated GIFs from videos, but you're running into errors before you ever get started. You can install it from the Software Center, but it won't work. Let me show you. I'm going to run Synaptic. And... The GIMP animation package is called GIMP-GAP. There it is. Let's mark it. And I'm going to go ahead and say apply. And apply again. And... Let's see. It should be installed according to this, right? So now let's open the GIMP. And we have our video menu at this point. Let's extract a video range. So uh, I'll do it from my brother's scanner video from the last time. Do you see what happened? Execution error for procedure, GIMP file load, unknown file type. That's because there are no handlers installed. Let's try it again. Even if I go ahead and say libav format, and then go ahead and do another search. Now that's still using the old way. it still won't load the file. So what we need is we need to have all the codecs that GimpGap understands installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to compile the GIMP animation package from a source code and then go ahead and install it and then I'll give you a brief demo of how it works. Now please understand that this demo is probably going to take 20 to 25 minutes and on your computer it could take upwards of a couple of hours depending upon the speed of your computer and the speed of your internet connection and this comes with a disclaimer I am not responsible for anything that happens to your computer you voluntarily take on the burden of downloading and installing all software I recommend updating your system to the latest version and backing up all your files prior to proceeding or working in a virtual environment to practice with that out of the way, let's get started. So I'm doing on what is essentially now a clean, updated uh, Ubuntu 15.10. I was going to do it in a virtual box, but I've done it now four or five times already, so I feel very comfortable doing it. I'm going to leave some links to some pages. The first one I'm going to do is if you're on Fedora, you can go to the GIMP chat forum I have linked and use that procedure. That's where I got this procedure. I basically used his and modified it. So first of all what we're going to do is we're going to set up our working environment and this is what Ubuntu recommends for compiling software. So we're going to go to Opera because that's what I use for browser kids. Alright, we're all done with that. We're going to go and get our latest version of the GIMP GAP, the GIMP animation package. So we're going to download our zip file. So there's GIMP GAP master. So what we're going to do is move it to our source folder. And our source folder is USR uh, local source. So let's open downloads in a new window move it in there and then you can unarchive it in the terminal I just go ahead and say extract here it's so much simpler then once you have it downloaded you are going to have to install all the other uh, dependencies to make it work because it just won't compile so 
all the dependencies are listed in my file here and I'm going to put I'm going to copy this whole thing into the show notes so you could put it into the terminal one after the other and it would probably work I like to use synaptic because it's easier for me and also what I need to do is I need to purge the GIMP, the GIMP gap 2.6 that we just installed So mark for complete removal and then apply that. All right. Move this over here. Move this over here. Now you're just going to go one at a time. Okay, once you have your last package, which is YASM, YASM, whatever you want to call it, marked, go ahead and hit apply. So these are all installed now, so we can close Synaptic. Now our next step is to go into our source file which is here and we're going to run a terminal and since we own this folder it's not roots folder we don't have to worry about it I'm going to change the transparency on here so you can see everything all right so what we need to do is run dot slash autogen dot sh and it goes ahead and it looks and makes sure that everything is kosher if you get any mistakes it'll be it'll show up here first if you get to this ffmpeg configure script option you're probably well on your way Alright, so now we have to type mate to compile the GIMP animation package. Before we do that, we have to make some changes to a couple of files. So, in the gap folder now that's been created in here, we double click into that, and we're looking for something called makefile. We're going to open this up in gedit, because that's the easiest way to do it. Separate it, and then drag it over here copy this line here and then in your make file go ahead and hit F command control F I'm sorry paste the command and it'll show up for you instantly then just go ahead and change it to this Say paste. Save it right now. All right, and then go to the next step. The next step is look for makefile.in, and we're looking for this line right here. Again, click on the file, go Control F, hit paste. It takes you right to it. You can add the you can add the extra part dash lm or copy and paste if you're not sure. Save it. All right. Now you're still in the terminal in that folder. So now all you have to do is type make. And this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause it. Okay that took nearly 11 minutes like I said depending upon the speed of your computer and your hard drives and everything like that could take you a little longer but this is what you want to see you want to see make two make two make two make one you don't want to see anything like that compile failed for all or something like that if it did it failed um, it will not work so now at the end here we go sudo make install. This doesn't take 10 minutes. Because it's loading all the plugins that are now compiled and ready for use. There it is. So I'm not going to close anything just yet, but we will test it out. Open the gap, or GIMP, I'm sorry, not the gap. 
Now you should have a video menu again, but this time when we ask it to do extract a video range, and I brought Big Buck Bunny over while it was compiling because Big Buck Bunny is one of the few files I can use confidently without getting a copyright strike. So you say OK, and it didn't error out. Now, how do we extract frames from this to make a GIF? Well, first of all, we can open this little side window called Video Range. And once we start swiping over this, we find do we want to create a video index file? Yes, we do, because it'll help us uh, if we do anything else with the file besides make an animated GIF. It can help us find frames a little faster and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that. And I will come back when this is all ready to roll. So we are back. That took about two minutes. But now when we go in here and look for frames, what it what creating an index does is it creates a pre-cache. So when we move the slider, we are not waiting for it to bring in all those frames. They're already in. We can just select them when we want. So we're going to make a small GIF based on the frames. And maybe we want it to start. You can actually play it from here. Well, let's go right to the beginning. I like the titles. Here we go. Now we're closer. OK, that's going to be our starting frame, 398. So let's go ahead and put 398 in there. And then we'll want our ending frame. somewhere right there. That is 497. So let's call it 498. And we'll make an even 100. We don't need an audio track. We're making an animated GIF. The active decoder is libav format. That is fine. To make an animated GIF, we're going to, we've got several choices. This is why the, the one that we compile is better than the one that's uh, on the software center or in the repository is because this gives us some choices. We can extract the frames to uh, files on the disk. We can extract the frames and store them in one multi-layer image or we can create a storyboard. To make a GIF we do this. We say extracted frames are stored in one multi-layer image. And all these other things are fine. So when you've got it all set up just go ahead and say OK. And there it is. And you can see over here on the layer panel that all of them are layers with the last layer being visible. Okay, that's important for later. So what we're going to do now is if we wanted to say do this for Tumblr and get it to a manageable size because if we exported it like this it would be crazy big. It would probably overtake this SSD in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say scale image and largest image that Tumblr will take is 500 pixels. So I'm going to say 500. And then it crops the height to 281, which is fine. So let's say scale. And it scales all of the layers down to a reasonable size. And then what we do is we just say export as. And we're going to say BBB dot gif and then we say I'm going to put it in my pictures and I say export and we want to export as an animation we want it to loop forever and I don't care about frame disposal it might make it easier if the uh, delay is a little bit different or whatever but that will change the speed so what you want to do is just say, and you can put a message in here, you can say it was created with GIMP, uh, made by Steve in GIMP, in the GIMP, there we go, and then say export, and this is going to take a minute.
again depending upon your speed speed of your drives all that other good stuff and it may look like it's going dead it's not and there it is so we can close the GIMP and we don't need to save it unless we want to save it that way all right and then we open up our home folder and our pictures folder and voila we've got an animated GIF now the size of this thing is probably too large for Tumblr let's get a properties 4.1 megabytes Tumblr's upper limit is 2 megabytes so we can't use this for that so there's a couple of things we can do we can just go in and maybe scale it down 100 pixels sometimes that seems to work yep sorry let's try it again I meant 400 it's not too much worse let's export it again do an animation and export and then let's try it again what's the properties on this one okay it's three gigs or three megs I'm sorry we're always thinking about gigs now megs is like nothing so there's another way to do this let me create a folder here another way to do it um, let's close this one I'm going to do a new one Didn't I say this was fun? And I already know what I want to do. 398 to 498. No audio. That's fine. Now we're going to say extracted frames are written to frame files on disk. And We're going to go in here. And that's cool. And we just say OK. You want to make a folder first and then dump them in the folder you'd like because you're going to get rid of these frames later. OK, now it only has one frame there. So let's close this view. we are going to do something to the frames so open in a terminal here see we have all these frames from 398 to 498 we have an index file right so open in terminal and then we're going to go ahead into we're going to run this command which is a regular expression command to delete all odd numbered frames. There we go. That was really fast. Now, if you notice here, 472, 468, so everything is, we're down to uh, 50 frames. So let's do this. Let's open up as layers. say open all right now what you've got to do is you've got to hide all the other layers so just go down and hide everything GIMP developers you really have to do something different with these layers because as a Photoshop person this is 
really tedious. I just should be able to say hide all and then select the one that I want. But we'll deal with want to scale the image to 500 pixels. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save it out as and again I don't care and now let's take a look It's a little bit in slow motion. We could change that if we wanted to. But the cool thing probably is is that the file size has reverted to ugh, it's a little bit too big. You've got to be experimenting at all times when you do this. Now it's one and a half megs. There you go. So that could go up to Tumblr just like that and it would be fine. What I am trying to do on this channel basically is, and let me explain it because you know that's how I am, uh, what I'm trying to do on this channel is uh, instead of installing a bunch of Linux distros and then people watching them and going oh I, that's something I'd like to install I'm trying to make it my mission in life to get you to use these things as a productive tool. Some people for whatever reason need to install Linux because XP won't run their favorite software or they're not rich enough to afford a Macintosh or you know for whatever reason they need something that works I you know this machine that's running here is a is a Core i3 Ivy Bridge it's not super capable but it can do stuff like this I've done this on a Core 2 Duo so uh, on a uh, IBM ThinkPad so this is not hard. I, you know, I just like for people to get the impression that Linux is actual can actually be used as a productive tool, and not just for you know, oh, I need to install the latest uh, distro of Antigos because you know that's the cool thing right now. That's why I'm doing it in Ubuntu, or you know, I would do it in Linux Mint, but I have my issues with Linux Mint. If I need to do things that Linux Mint cannot do, and that a uh, plain vanilla install of, of Ubuntu can do. So that's basically my mission at this thing. And if you guys like that, that's great. Go ahead and uh, give me a like. Subscribe if you want to. And as always, have a pleasant day everybody and use Linux productively. Thanks for watching.